this is all the and the education system. Okay, so obviously you can't answer it because I'm back. I knew what's the response to this one since you said it. Yeah, I mean, things you say, I completely agree that they're horrendous. Who doesn't? And, you know, proud of this all the right. Yeah. I disavow what they do. And, and so when you say that, 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 that what I can show you, 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 what I so, just going back to what you were saying earlier, so in, in the eight minutes of, of what I said, what did you find about it that, that appeals to the all, right? That would, that would appeal to those groups and incite violence? You're seriously asking that question after the number of followers that you have? No, no, what, what I just said now. Were we talking about what I, what I just said? Oh, um, you responded to Osama when you talked about the need for have, to have respect for freedom, which means love, right? So if you know something is fundamentally hurtful to somebody else, the loving response, if you're a decent human being, that your, that your parents taught you how to respect other people, is not to willingly do stuff that you know incite hatred or would lead to the death of people like me. That's if you're a decent human being. I just want to argue that rationality is Nazi ideology and you should just kill people if you feel like killing people. That's a different conversation. And if that is your stance and you stand with the Nazis, that's okay. At least be honest. But don't be disingenuous and say this stuff. Because you're not a two-year-old. You know what you're saying. Next. If you claim that you're rational. Next question. Apparently I'm not. Well, she, she did. No, no, no. She said, she said asked me what was it that was problematic. And I told her exactly what it was. It was your response to Osama that you just want freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
might actually have a good point or two. Or number two, your opponents believe not on the basis of, of the evidence, but believe on the basis of a whole variety of other things. Maybe it's tied in with their family beliefs. Maybe it's tied in with their religious beliefs. So it's not just that they believe these things or refuse refuse to believe that you're right, or refuse to agree with your position on abortion on evidential grounds. They do it because if they repudiate those things, they repudiate their family, their friends, all of the things that they take value take to be valuable in this world. So the argument becomes a heck of a lot more difficult because now it's going to be hard to try and dissuade them of that view because it's based on so many other things than just evidence. Right. At the very least, you get a chance to see what is behind this view that you disagree with. Right, but we're not talking about apples and oranges here. We're talking about people's existence. And when we set up a platform where we allowed, where we allow alt-right fascists and Nazis allowed to yeah. perpetuate yeah. hate speech and gather more followers. Now, I think the question's been asked. I want to hear if uh, Osama and uh, Lindsay have, have responses. No? Uh, but Osama, can I ask, what if a pro-life group wanted to organize among the students and wanted to demonstrate on campus? If I, would, I would agree with you in having a safe place. This, this university should be a safe place and a welcome place for the 7,000 students who are here. Uh, if this discussion inside the classroom will really uh, make students, and I'm not talking about make students offended and or they don't like the, the talk of it, but it's really going to make them uh, uh, feel that they're not safe up to be in this university. That means I'm not sure where is the other place to be safe other than home. So uh, well, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be there in the classroom. Um, makes it and safe. Uh, Russell, what's, well, I mean, what we're basically talking about here is just whether or not people should be able to present a view on something. Uh, it happens to be abortion in this case. And I can recall in grade 10, you know, we, we had staged debates about a variety of topics, including abortion, and nobody got upset. Like, oh, it's simply an exercise and argumentation. So what I want to suppose here is, can we not expect a higher degree of intellectual maturity in the university setting? Should students not be prepared to engage in ideas which they might find a little unsettling? If, if they're not, why are they not? Mm -hmm. against people in minorities. That has been something that has been coming out of the ward work for a long time and has very much made itself known. Okay, thanks. And okay, I, we'll just, the next, the next I just have one last, just let me finish my sentence. Um, if you want to look at history and look at how all those organizations that actually caused violence and death were formed, this is what it looked like. They put up posters, they made clubs, they got followers. We allowed them to create propaganda that led to the harm and death of many minorities. And we're just saying, okay, let's cool, like let's do that again. But okay. Some kind of a 
strange notion of free speech that allows that kind of discussion to happen. I'm totally comfortable with opening ideas and having discussions that are uncomfortable or that push the envelope, okay. But bigotry has no place as a notion. Yeah, what do you think? Sorry, but there, but there you go. Who wishes to respond? Because Osama, do you have that? Yeah. Oh no, everyone said Osama. And in my opinion, I would say the line of the differentiation would be that freedom of speech goes away when it becomes hate speech. That's where, where that's where the freedom of speech is not the right freedom. Of speech. So, <laughs> so, so it comes, when it becomes a hate speech, when it becomes a hate speech, uh, that you are. But targeting a group or targeting audience or targeting students, that's where it's not the right freedom of speech. So that is the intersect of free speech that needs to be talked about and evolved and, and focused on because allowing uh, people to disguise or use a, a bigotry as a way of uh, shaping free speech is not acceptable. So where is that line? Mark? Did you want to uh, address this point? Yeah. I got you. But Russell, Russell then. Russell's got something. So, I mean, I, I think a question we all need to ask ourselves is without a free academy where ideas can be challenged and created and destroyed through, you know, the processes of academic freedom being exerted, how are we ever going to be able to devise reasonable criteria for what constitutes bigotry? Again, the definition of which is freedom to express yourself without restriction, yes or no? You said freedom of speech, 
Freedom of speech. Yeah, so freedom of speech is the freedom to unrestrictedly speak. Yes, that's what it means. Okay, so I could express my views tonight on black culture or uh, abortion from a pro life stance, not well, here, but I could speak that <laughs> anywhere. Well, that's anywhere. No, 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 but I mean that I, I would be able to do that, though, without censorship. In a free speech zone? Yes, you yes. would. Free yes. speech zone? A free speech zone, is that? I'm sorry. Did you, did you have a, a question that... Okay, sorry, I was answering uh, these yes or no questions. Um, do you have any friends or acquaintances who are Nazis? <laughs> Can we, can we move to the next question? Well, we, we, we know the answer. I already know the answer. The topic is freedom of expression in academia, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hello, I just have a quick comment and a question for our student body president. Uh, I know we want to hear from the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Okay, so Lindsay, last month you tweeted, many people seem to think that just because I question or criticize someone's words, it automatically means I want them silenced. Couldn't it be further from the truth? I believe people should say what they please, no matter how disrespectful. To me, that constitutes advocating for hate speech. Now, my question to the city body president. If, say, it wasn't Lindsay who came to the Freedom of Speech book, maybe Richard Spencer, would you be sitting there having a debate with Richard Spencer, allowing him on campus, having a panel and everything? Would you like for that? Thank you. issue that was raised multiple times of political actors within the university, I think it's important to confront that and name that directly um, and name the presence of right-wing reactionary political actors within the university, I think, uh, exemplary of this. I want to raise the question of why, for example, did the president of the, uh, the hosts of tonight's event find it necessary to speak of defending the right of Dow Dentistry students to uh, make threatening comments about racism? Whereas I have miserably come to the defense of saying Mr. McCann, we see again and again this pattern. Uh, Lindsay, in particular, you were quite explicit about uh, not defending Mr. McCann. Freedom of speech on Twitter, uh, the tweet's there, anyone can read it and decide for themselves. I'm still asking a question, please. Um, so I'd like you to speak to the issue. Um, 
You've talked about political actors, political actors, political actors, and talked about the necessity to engage directly. Um, do you mean a particular type of political actor? Is this an, a particular ideological persuasion you're concerned with? Is there this coded, we're concerned about left academics that has run through this? Um, and are you yourselves on the political right? I, I would argue that playing ball with Faith Goldie, noted white supremacist, probably puts you on the right, even while you're calling yourself a into social justice. Okay. That's called bullshit, bullshit. Uh, so, thank you. Can I, can I say, uh, just, just for the record, uh, I published an article in defense of the Steam Con. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Yes, and, and I also... I also... Uh, I, I completely... No, I mean, I, I do want to say for the record that, that I completely defend what Ms. Umacon says. Of course, she has the right to express whatever she wants on social media. I was also, the administration also came after me for what I posted on social media. But you're conflating what I said. So the, the reason is I was compared to Ms. Umacon on many occasions in, in many editorials. And, you know, one of the questions was, you know, why, why, does, why do I have such a larger following than she does? And, you know, like, something that was brought up was her race and religion, and that's a valid point, completely valid. But, you know, <clears throat> um, anyway, yeah. Uh, next question, please. I say what you're talking about. No, we have some right there, Mike. I think that was directed towards me. I just don't, I want to say I don't think is about left or right. I think it's just about lining people up behind politicians so that we, who are serving as the agents of the finance capitalists that are running them. Oh, I honestly you. think that it's just, you know, about maintaining the control. And that's why these political operatives are being instituted into institutions of education to, to, to put an academic veneer over the propaganda. It, it's just to serve as a means to just keep the, the march of tyranny rolling. So I don't think it's about left or right. So I'd like to like I'm, no, I'm not, um, I'd like to press you a bit more on the idea of ideologues, what you've categorized as I think ideologues. Well, this versus, will be the last question, by the way, because we're out of time. We go upstairs and talk. Right. Well, we have the room rented for a certain time. <laughs> um, the idea. Of, Act, like ideologues versus academic freedom, right? Or, or people who advocate for academic freedom. I want to know what, without sort of the politics, which are subjective and wrong or whatever, what does an academic course look like? What does it look like? Very, very quickly, the rigorous <coughs> pursuit of knowledge through application of empirical research, well-founded reasoning, and, you know, articulate methodology. Yeah, but it's when the questions become more abstract than orange, and orange is orange. That kind of empirical data doesn't mean as much without interpretation. Then we refer to the, the, the well-founded reasoning and conceptual analysis. Who's well yeah. Who's well yeah, my, my question is, is like, what is, what is, what do these debates look like when they're not political? I guess. Mark, did you want to answer? Yeah. Uh, what do academic debates look like if they're not political? I don't. I don't really know how to answer that except to say, coming from a from philosophy.
subject that you mean something about which? Very quickly, Mark, we gotta go. Do you think that just because something is subjective that, that it's based on emotions or just some conjecture? Or, or when you say subjective, do you mean something about which we just don't have an objective answer to or something that can't be That's what I Supporters, supporting supporters such as Mike Sonovich, the organizer of the Unite the Right neo Nazi rally in Charlottesville. There is a subversive, politically motivated plot to infiltrate Western academia and other Western institutions. Uh, this delusion is known as cultural Marxism. Uh, I would like you to elaborate on this idea and what it means to you. Well, uh, the video that Lindsay uh, showed to her students was a Jordan Peterson video, and I believe he is a huge uh, proponent of cultural Marxism uh, ideology and the fact that it exists at all. No, he, that's what I'm saying. He believes in a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory invented by literal Nazis. Go Google. You don't believe me? Google. Go on your phones right now, everybody. Google cultural Marxism. Google's always right. <laughs> no, but I guess I guess that's what you're right, though. Lindsay Shepard of being some kind of agent of Peterson's, because, you know, of course, he's sneaky like that. Right? <laughs> well, no, but the Marxists are sneaky like that, right? <laughs> right? Well, right, McCarthy? We're out, we're out of time. They're hiding on your bed, right? They're coming after you. Come get your kids. Run. The communists are coming. Ooh. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nazi scum. Yeah.